Hello, everyone. Students, today our topic is software engineering, and this is software engineering part two. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about waterfall model. In our previous lecture, we discussed some basic concept of SDLC and uh, software engineering. So there are many models regarding to SDLC by which we can easily create a software. These are waterfall models, red models, spiral models, V models, incremental models, agile model, iterative model, and Big Bang model. So, what is waterfall model? Actually, waterfall model is also called as classical waterfall model. It is the basic model of software development life cycle, also called as SDLC. It is very simple to use and it is very idealistic, and it is the oldest model of SDLC. And uh, it is very important nowadays because this model is very simple and uh, very easy to use. This classical waterfall model divides SDLC lifecycle into different set of phases, and different set of phases are in such a manner that output of a phase is the input for the next phase. So this is a basically called as classical waterfall model. So it behave like a waterfall. That's why it is called the waterfall model. It means that we can go in only a single direction and we cannot go into reverse direction. Once a stage is complete, then we cannot able to go back to that stage. That's why it is called the waterfall model. It is a uh, advantage of waterfall model and it is also a disadvantage of waterfall model. Dis disadvantage in that term. Uh, because if we want to make any change in waterfall model that is not possible after completion of one phase or one stage but it is easy to use and uh, since if we have clear-cut idea of about what we want to do in a particular software or if the requirement it's quite clear then it is the advantage of waterfall model so this is the life cycle of waterfall model. We can see that we can see that there are basically five phases. First one is requirement analysis and specification. Second one is design. Third one is implementation and unit testing. Fourth one is integration and system testing. Fifth one is operation operators and uh, maintenance. In between them, there is also a deployment. So operator and maintenance before there is a another phase deployment which uh, many many book mention deployment as a phase of software engineering and some of them consider integration and system testing as a part of deployment or deployment as part of integration and system testing so basically there are five phases first one is again i told you that first one is requirement analysis and specification second one is system design or software design Third one relates to implementation and new testing, also called, called as coding. And uh, this phase is also called as coding. Next is integration and system testing. And last part is operators and maintenance. So these are the five basic parts. Some author refer feasibility study as first phase software engineering. So, include if we include this, then there are total six phases. So, as far as basic functionality is concerned, there are basically five phases. You can write in exam these five phases and describe them. And if you want to discuss feasibility study, discuss it in this part. Requirement analysis, specification. But if you want to separate feasibility study, then feasibility study is part one and requirement analysis and specification is part one. So now uh, let us take them one by one. What is feasibility study? Feasibility study means that uh, our software is feasible or not. And when we check the feasibility, feasibility is, is checked in terms of technical, schedule, economical and operational feasibility. So what is technical feasibility? Technical feasibility says that is the 
means is the project possible with current technology or what technical risk is there avail available of the technology so there are two questions regarding to technical feasibility if answer is yes then we can say that software is technical feasible otherwise software is not technical feasible so suppose if the current of technology uh, is java and the project is and we can do project in java uh, turn then we can say that uh, it is uh, technical feasible it's a uh, it's function it's, uh, some of its functionality not from java programming then we can say that it is not technical feasible and second is scheduled feasibility scheduled feasibility uh, then regarding to schedule feasibility and question is is it possible to build a solution in time to be useful if answer is yes then we can say that it is it contains schedule feasibility otherwise it doesn't contain schedule feasibility so if we make a software within a time then it contains schedule feasibility third is economical feasibility economical feasibility means uh, is the project possible given resource constraint? What are the benefit? So we have certain resources, and if we have software using these resources, then we can say that it is economical feasible, or it is benefit. Then we can also say that it is, it, it is economical feasible. Otherwise, it is not economical. Fourth is operational feasibility. Operational feasibility. There is a question regarding to operational feasibility, and question is, if the system is developed, will be used human or social is that operational feasibility? If the system is developed, is used, then we can say that operational feasible doesn't contain operational feasibility. So there are four types of feasibility. After four types of feasibility. The, the requirement analysis and specification begins. So now, as the term suggests to requirement analysis and specification. So after that, we analyze the requirement of a software and there is a report regarding to that. And this report is for SRS. So SRS is a part of requirement analysis and specification process. So the aim of the requirement analysis and the specification phase is to understand the exact requirement of the customer and document them properly. So in this phase, what we have to do, just find out the exact requirement of the customer, what customer want from us and document them properly. So this is requirement analysis and basically it contains two parts. First one is requirement gathering and analysis. This part first of all the requirement regarding the software are gathered from the customer and get the requirement analyzed. Requirement are analyzed. The goal of the analysis part is to remove incompleteness and inconsistencies. So basically, this part focus about about gathering gather customers requirement. And after that analysis, after that analyzed that requirement, and basically it remove incompleteness and inconsistencies regarding to customer requirement. And second part is requirement specification. So requirement specification, we actually create a report also called as SRS. SRS means Software Requirement Specification. So these analyzed requirement are documented in a Software Requirement Specification. So basically SRS is type of document which basically contain all information re re basically related to a software or we can say that SRS is a detailed description of a software system to be developed with its functional and non-functional requirement requirement related to its functionality or non-functional or non-functional both type of requirement are there in SRS and uh, SRS developed based on the agreement between the customer and the contractor. So there are two person, one, uh, one, uh, one is customer and second one is contractor. Ready to put the software. So basically work as a contract between 
customer and contractor or we can say that developer let me include the use case of how, how user is going to interact with software system so it it may stages of how user is going to interact with software system. So any feature is between the customer and the developer can be settled by the examining the SRS document. So in short we can say that SRS or software application is a type of document and contract between the customer and the contractor and for any feature dispute between the customer and the developer or contractor it can be settled by the SRS uh, document and this document basically contains the functional and non-functional requirement regarding to a software. The SRS software requirement specification. It is a very important question and uh, maybe asked in examination that defined SRS. So SRS refers for software requirement specification and there are four points important points regarding to SRS. First point is it belongs to software requirement specification part that is phase 1 of SDLC or platform model and uh, it is basically a document which contain the functional and non-functional requirement of a software or it is a contact between customer and contractor. These are the three important points regarding to SRS. And here are some main elements of SRS. So these are the main <coughs> elements. These elements are business drivers, business models, functional and system requirement, business and system use cases, technical requirements, system qualities, constraints, assumptions, and last is acceptance criteria. So these are the basic element or main element of SRS that SRS contains this type of information, business drivers, business model, functional and system requirement, business and system use cases, technical requirements, system qualities, constraints and assumption and acceptance criteria. So uh, in short we can say that related to a software it contains all the information such as what is the technical requirement to develop a software or what are the functional or system requirement of a software, what are the different constraints regarding to a software, what are the different assumptions regarding to a software, what is the acceptance criteria regarding to a software and what is the business model which we follow to develop a software and different business drivers. So what is business driver? Drivers may include the problem and the opportunities. So this is the part of business driver, uh, business uh, driver and uh, it provides motivation for create a new system. So business driver contains basically a combination of problems and opportunities. So all these parts are discussed in business drivers. So these are the part of SRS report, software requirement specification. Next, is, next stage is uh, design stage. Um, we complete the one that is the specification and the SRS report that is required specification and second part begins and second part is design stage. So this phase aims to transform the requirement gathered in SRS into suitable form which permits further coding or we can say that in this phase actually a design software. How look the software? So that is the design of a software. So it is find the overall system software or system architecture together with the high level and detailed design. So in this detailed design is also discussed and uh, it is basically contain overall software architecture. So overall software architecture is built in this phase that is design stage. And uh, there is a report also at this level and this report is called software design document. Remember that in uh, requirement analysis and specification phase there is a report named SRS which means software requirement specification. And in this design stage, there is a software design document. Basically, is the type of document the information related of the software or overall system architecture. It is a design level, hard 
hardware and software requirement document the design and basically plan the programming language java php or design stage overall software architecture and information such as what type of programming java php dot net is used in is used in um, there, type of database or oracle mysql is used and some other information and even in high level and four type of design in design stage in the part of software design document so this is part number Number two, design stage. Third is and implementation is also for less. So third part, we actually program. We actually write program related to a software. That is also called as implementation. And how implementation? So there, actually, system is divided into different parts or modules, and these parts or modules are called as unit. So in this phase. We actually code different uh, units or modules. We actually uh, code or uh, we actually write different codes for different units or modules, and after that, test these units or modules also. That is called testing. So after the design is implemented, DD. So implementation. Strictly for SGD and uh, unit testing is the level of software testing. It is a type of software testing where we are individual unit. Individual unit components of a software are tested. So, you can prepare different units one by one, and after that, when you prepare all units. Then you integrate the, all these units by taking them as small division. In this phase, actually, unit testing is of a software. Write code for units, and after that, you can also write units. But that test is basically is there. SDS and test uh, testing is actually the execution of a program or a software in intent to find out an error. So we actually execute a program in intent to find out an error. So our aim is to find out an error, not to successfully execute the program. Somehow, if we find out an error, then we can say that it is a good testing. In this case, test particular element or particular part of a software. System testing. So till now, phase number third, we actually develop different units or write code for different unit and also test different unit. But in part number four, there is integration and system testing. Integration of all units, combined all units in a single part. Integration. So integration of different models are undertaken soon after they have coded and until. During each integration step, previously planned modules are added to the integrated system, and the resultant system is tested. And finally, after integration complete, then system testing. Whether the system works as a single, whether the software works as a single system or not, so that is called the system testing. Units of a software or different models of a software combined. Into a single part called a system, and after that, system testing is to be done when there is a conversion of integration of the software into a single unit. And uh, system testing is divided into three parts. Of his, uh, we can say that system testing activities is described in three terms three types of testing are alpha testing, beta testing, and 
testing is done by a developer or a second person who is not developed a particular software so first, in first case it is called a second case it is because he knows the functionality of a software very well so some point he neglects some point by testing the softwares so beta testing is required so beta testing is done by customers or another person who is not a part of and uh, third one is acceptance so after the software has been delivered the customer perform the acceptance testing to determine whether to accept the delivery software or not Whether the software is the correct one or the So, whether the software is accepted or rejected as part of acceptance testing. So, these are the three different types of testing alpha testing, beta testing, and acceptance testing. There are other important testing also called as black box testing and white box testing. So, black box testing tree into a black box and we cannot find out the path of that tree of light. We pass it through a white box. We can also say uh, the path of a tree. Uh, so it is called the white box. So in the in similar fashion we can say that black box testing is a type a type of testing in only in which we can check only the functionality of a software by giving input and we if we get the correct output regarding to a particular input that we can say that uh, black box testing is successful so we can we check only we have checked only the input and as well as the output not the functional part or the not the only the functional part and not the code of that function uh, or code of that program or software but in a uh, white box testing we also check the code of Software or particular program is called acceptance. So, this is the basic difference between black box testing and white box testing. In black box, actually, we cannot able to see any path of in uh, inside the black box, but in white box, we also we also check the path of a particular element which pass through a box, white box. So, this is the difference between black box testing and white box testing. So, the um, Basic difference is that in black box testing, we check only the functionality. It means uh, we, uh, we uh, only pass the input and check only the output. If the output is correct for a particular set of input, then we can say that black box testing is successful. And in white box testing, we also check the functionality as well as the code of a particular part that how this functionality is basically uh, basically done uh, using programming. That is uh, a part of white box testing so white box testing also uh, also contain the code part and uh, by white box testing black box testing doesn't contain the code part it only contain the execution of for a particular input if the if there is a successful exit if, if uh, there is successful execution of the program after giving a particular set of input and there is correct output then we can say that black box so this, these are another type of testing so it is a very important question sometimes asked in examination what is the difference between alpha testing and beta testing and what is the difference between black box testing and white box testing so this is system testing actually testing is itself a um, very big uh, unit or very uh, 
a big topic um, in which there are so many number types of testing but here in 12th level we discuss on some important part which is which may be asked in examination and uh, this part related to system testing and contain alpha testing beta testing and acceptance testing next is uh, software operation and maintenance Software application and maintenance involve planning for the execution activities such as operation, production uh, on software application. Actually, when we actually write the code of a particular software or we also test a particular code or a software after that deployment is uh, deployment of software is another phase which we will not mention in this part but it is considered as a part of uh, fifth operation software operation and maintenance and uh, after that then should be very important question why is already tested the answer of this question basically um, mentioned mention the basic uh, mention different types of maintenance of different types of maintenance and there are different types of maintenance these are corrective maintenance perfective maintenance and adaptive maintenance actually maintenance work is always there whenever we create a software and first one is corrective maintenance so corrective maintenance basically is a type of maintenance carried out to correct errors that we not have discovered during the product development phases so only one particular ability that a particular part of the phase we ignore and uh, we can find out an error regarding to that particular part of a software and after uh, deployment of a software we can also correct it and that is called the corrective maintenance Perfective maintenance. Perfective maintenance means this type of maintenance is carried out to enhance the functionality of the system based on the customer request. Sometimes customer wants certain uh, requirement regarding the software which is not a part of a software which we deliver. Then we can maintain the software. This type of maintenance is called the perfective maintenance. And third one is which is very important adaptive maintenance adaptive maintenance basically related to computer platform uh, for example if the software is able to run only windows 7 and it is not able to run on windows 10 and uh, according to certain conditions or platform if you want to give a higher version or other platform then there is a type of maintenance called the three types of maintenance it is also a part of software operation and maintenance. So, and this important question belongs to what are the different types of maintenance, and this is the five of software operation and maintenance. And uh, now, there is an important question: when we when we to use SGLC waterfall model? So, uh, what is the use of SGLC waterfall model? Actually, there are different models. So when we uh, when there is a condition or when if you want to create a software, then advantage and disadvantage of a particular type of model. So as application or big software or uh, very complicated software then we cannot use software model, model. So for useful it's useful when the environment is clear pretty much clear because they are a step back in previous stage and environment is stable technology of tools are used not dynamic waterfall model for a small uh, software or application and only when requirement is very clear second is what are the advantage and disadvantage advantage is that the next phases of the development each phases must be completed advantage and uh, disadvantage is error can be fixed only during the phase if all phase is complete very difficult to Make changes after the completion of a phase because after one phase, after one phase is complete, then another phase starts. Which depends, another phase starts, and uh, after, and if you want.
want to change certain if you want to make certain changes in previous stage of then it is very difficult and uh, uh, makes uh, and the second point is it is suitable or suited for small projects and it is a advantage it is not desired for complex project third point is they should perform quality assurance test verification and validation these are the two terms verification validation and it is discussed later on in this video and uh, disadvantage is testing period comes quite late in the development process actually testing is done after overall completion of the project and fourth point is elaborate documentation is done at early phases of a software development like you see that srs report is made uh, and uh, sdt report both uh, types of reports are basically completed uh, phases and this advantage is that uh, documentation occupies a lot of time of developers and testers so these are the basic advantages and disadvantages and uh, this is and validation is we also can means process and validation is dynamic process or dynamic testing so in verification it is a static process for analyzing the document and not the actual end product and in validation it involves the dynamic testing of software product by running it so we can say that the software is made according to the user requirement that is called the verification software is not proper there is no error at all that is called the validation it doesn't mean the requirement of a software validation part it actually concerned with the ex successfully execution of a software